So I'm helping my son make a desk and he wanted to do an epoxy pour with kind of this metallic mica stuff and I have a bunch left over and I want to put it in a glaze and I'm fairly convinced it's not going to work but let me show you what I got. Okay, so this is Marbler's colorant, epoxy colorant. It's a fine powder. Let me show you what it says it's made of. It's made of titanium dioxide and iron oxide. So that titanium dioxide, I do believe uh, they use a chemical process to get the color they want. But in the end, I do believe it is, is truly an oxide, like putting a flame on a piece of metal and it'll change colors. Uh, so what that means is this is going to go white in the glaze. That is my prediction. But I have a whole bunch of it, so let's just see what happens. I'll put it on these two little bases right here. Okay, so I have some clear and uh, sea foam. We'll give a little sprinkle into each one. Boy, this stuff gets everywhere. Might as well give it a healthy bit. There you go. And if it does something interesting to the glaze that's unanticipated, I can always go back and do some tests to find out when things happen, but we'll just put a big fat dollop in there for now. Okay, so there may be some kind of floaty chunks in there, but it's very fine. It looks plenty distributed. So, just gonna dip, see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna put them in the kiln, and then tomorrow we'll see what they look like. Absolutely nothing. No difference at all. So, here's what I have going on. I have this pot, sort of got a hole in the bottom, it'll be a pot for a plant and I have a white glaze on it right now inside now when the foot is clean and I'd like to put a little decoration on it so went over to a close by Japanese maple and stole a little branch and I want to take these along with some old leftover glazes I have a yellow I have like a variegated blue and then a, an amber old test glazes that are left over a little dry I'm going to smear each of these little leaves in a glaze and stick it on the pot. And then I think I'm going to spray this pot while the leaves are still stuck on. Hopefully, hopefully they stay on, cooperate. And once we've sprayed it, then I can pull the leaves off and we'll fire it. I've not exactly done it this way before, so I'm kind of excited to see. And I'm going to leave the little stems on. Hopefully that gives me a little handle to get them off after we spray glaze. I'm going to spray on floating blue and then we'll peel these off and we'll see what happens. Well, that worked pretty good. I really thought these leaves would get blown off. Oh, interesting. Didn't occur to me that I'd have that sporadic of a glaze application. Hmm. Well, at least it's consistently sporadic. And did you notice how terrible my white glazing job was? Oh, man. Last night, before I closed up the studio, I wanted to get this dunked, and so I just 
mixed up a bucket and dumped it and wiped it and set it aside and it looked fine but this morning looking at it oh my gosh I don't know what happened I don't remember it being so drippy well there we are that's kind of interesting all right we'll get this in the kiln and tomorrow we'll see what it looks like so here it is out of the kiln I think it turned out pretty cool. I definitely have some pinholing going on here, but you know, it's a, it kind of fades to white on the inside. It's a nice planter pot. So right before I closed up the kiln, I decided to do a couple uh, little cups I had uh, sitting around that were needing a glaze and so I did some more of these leaves I did all the leaves on these in one color and again don't like maybe the amber maybe that kind of golden color would look nice but don't really care for but I, I, I do kind of dig the idea of having uh, leaf prints on a mug just maybe not using it to actually apply glaze Oh well, fun experiment. Let me know what you think. Well, I'm making a quick test glaze. I have most of the ingredients all measured out. Here is the recipe. And you will notice, this is a low fire clear glaze. But we're gonna use it to put over uh, mid fire glazes and see does it help it flow, will it make them melty and shiny or will it be terrible so let's find out so I always start with a little bit of water it helps minimize the dust obviously it still happens through an 80 mesh sieve to get out any chunks. I'm going to dip this and spray it so it's a little thinner than I normally like it for a dipping glaze. So this glaze test is based on this Matthew Kelly mug I received. You know, I, I thought it was great. I love the red. And I set it on my shelf and I realized I have almost nothing that's red. And early on, I tried some red recipes with my new kiln. But you quickly realize that in an oxidation kiln, it's really tough to get reds. It's, it's, you can get kind of a burgundy. I found a red by Coyote called Really Red. So it occurred to me as I'm looking at this mug, I wonder, can I do this? So, two thoughts. One, I'm going to do some blue and red combos with this glaze. And we're going to fire it on some of these little pots and see uh, how it looks. And you notice on Matthew Kelly's, it's really a tan blue-red combo. So on some of these, I'm going to do a, a tan dip on the rim, and we'll see just how close. But the wild card is this. I want to test this low fire clear on top of these combos and just see with and without uh, does it melt what happens and let's find out all right so there's the clear first and then over the clear Alright, so there it is for the red. A slight deviation of plan. We're going to try a seafoam. It breaks nice. You've seen it on other videos. I'm going to try to make this blue be a seafoam and we're going to continue with a red seafoam and tan combo. 
I'm ready to rim dip each one. So nice and thin, but it's gotten over everything. I gotta spray this on this one and then we'll spray a comparison on that one. Did want to dip a test tile just in the clear and we'll fire this and see just by itself what, what it does. Well, it's the next morning. Let me get these out, we'll take a look. Uh, if you recall, these were our three primary tests. We have the low fire clear over, low fire clear under, and then no low fire clear at all. And uh, I'll show you that I'm surprised. The clear on its own on this test tile, maybe it breaks to white a little bit, but there's no pinholing. It's very smooth, no crazing yet. So that's kind of interesting. I expected it to react poorly to being overcooked. But let's take a look at each one of these and I'll see if I can show you. What we're seeing here is do either of these look better than this? Did the clear do anything? So I think it's a really cool pattern. Now we're not getting the anything like what Matthew Kelly was getting. That was a drip in the dipping process, obviously not, not melting, but it didn't move. That's one thing that was interesting. I left these bottles naked. So this is the under. I really kind of thought like a rivulet, like it would, again, a drip from dipping, not from melting in the kiln, but they look very similar. I would say that maybe the, uh, having it, Having it under, maybe turned up the green a little bit, didn't diffuse it as much. But here's what's interesting. If you look at this, you'll see that this is just as shiny. And if you kind of look at the, the sharpness of the reflection of my lights, you can see very, very little um, orange peel, very shiny. And I know we're not trying to get this exactly, but look at Matthew Kelly's cup again. I'm not sure the camera's gonna pick it up, but it is glossy. It is like a really super shiny. And also in hindsight, there's no way he's got red and blue under this. I didn't, I should have go look up a video where he shows how he glazes these. But if you recall, I also sprayed, sprayed clear and I sprayed my regular Ashley's Rivulet. And uh, I like it, of course, because I like that brown. Um, that's not really the point. But boy, what a difference. What a difference. This is kind of what I expected the low fire to do, like really, really melt it all together. So nothing like what I was going for, but I kind of like this. I think if this covered the full body and maybe had a bit of a transition in this color, a little bit more green at the top, um, this is kind of an interesting combination. So I think playing with the rivulet is going to be more fun and it just adds a little bit more depth to the color. I think this is a good start. So the next thing to do is I need to throw some test mugs and we'll do a full size mug test and see if we can develop some sort of some sort of combo out of this idea right here. So, let me know what you think. Hope you enjoyed.